Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back. Now I'm going to do a briefer version of my top 10 most expensive cards from Visions, where I just don't talk quite as in detail about each card in case you just want to watch a much more quick video where I just actually go through the top 10 cards without talking about them so much. Um, yeah, a bit of background, um, making these series partially because I'm looking at collections and I need to know what the most notable cards are from each set in order to evaluate collections. So anyway, number 10 we have Necromancy. Um, it's an enchantment, basically 3 mana to reanimate a creature and you can also play it at instant speed but you have to sacrifice it at the end of the turn. Uh, so let's skip that. A lot of text <laughs> on the card. It's very much text. If anything, it'll intimidate your opponents because of the amount of text on it. And these cost about $9. It is an uncommon and not on the reserve list. So if you have an old collection of magic cards, you may have a few copies of these. It's definitely something worth noting. At number 9, and a reserve list rare, we have Undiscovered Paradise. It is a land, it can tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool, but at the beginning of your next untap phase, you must return it to your hand. So, has its advantages and disadvantages, you know. Could be used for landfall, and these cost about 13 bucks right now. Um, although it does look they've, sorry, it does look like they've been recently bought out, so that's something to note. At number 8, and another reserve list rare is Femerif Enchantress. For one white and one green, you get a 1-2 creature, and whenever any enchantment goes to the graveyard, even your opponents, you get to draw a card, which is pretty sweet, and also combos with Enchanted Evening. Also recently spiked, just like the other card, and comes in at $15. At number 7, we have Retribution of the Meek for two colorless and one white. It is a sorcery which destroys all creatures with power 4 or greater, and those creatures can't be regenerated. So it would be very interesting if your deck had mostly creatures with power 3 or less. You could use it almost as like a one-sided board wipe. Another note, a lot of these cards have had recent price spikes, and I'm not going to include the graph for every single card that has had a recent price spike, but this one is another one that has. Um, and it comes in at about 15 bucks at the time of making this video. Ooh, uh, speeding along. Number six, we have Tithe. For one white is an instant. You can search your library for a planes, or if an opponent has more lands than you, you get to find two planes instead. So really good card advantage for one mana. Not as good as land tax, but doesn't mean that it's not good. And you can find dual lands and non-basics with it, which is another awesome aspect of it. Tithe will cost you about 16 bucks. And at number 5, another reserve list rare, is Anvil of Bogarden. I should mention, if there's a star next to it, it's a reserve list rare. That's what that means. So for 2 mana, is an artifact. Players have no maximum hand size, and during each player's draw phase, they draw an additional card, and then choose and discard a card. Combos with Chains of Mephistopheles, sorry, Chains of Mephistopheles and Leovold to essentially completely lock out your opponent's and stops them from gaining any cards per turn. It gives them a net zero, essentially, card balance at every turn. And it also combos with cards that trigger when your opponents discard cards or when your opponents draw cards. Anvil of Bogarden costs around 16 bucks as of the making of this video. And number four is not a reserve list rare, although it is a rare and is natural order. Pretty self-explanatory. For 4 mana, sorcery, you sacrifice a green creature to find any green creature in your deck. So it can be easily abused to find things like Progenitus for just 4 mana. So you can see why this card is a little bit expensive. It has been reprinted a few times, but still manages to fetch a price of around 18 bucks per card. Not bad. And number 3, another reserve list rare, is City of Solitude. For 2 colorless, 1 green, this enchantment allows players only to play spells and activated abilities during their turn. So it shuts down all counter spells effectively. And it also stops players from activating mana abilities. So any cards which check if any opponent wants to pay colorless mana to negate the card's effects suddenly become a lot more effective and you can sometimes force your opponents into really bad situations with different cards. Because this is the short version of the video, I'm not actually gonna talk about every single combo that I listed there, but if you do want to see those definitely head on over to the longer version of this video. And this card, City of Solitude, 
is selling for around $20 per card at the moment. And number two, another reserve list rare, is Squandered Resources. A really good combo card. For two mana, is an enchantment, which you can sacrifice a land to get a mana that the land could produce. Combos really well with Natural Balance, and it was part of a famous combo deck piloted by Mike Long in 1997. Each use of Natural Balance with Squandered Resources gets you six mana and thins your deck out by five basic lands. And these cards are selling for about 20 bucks. At number one is not a reserve list card, surprisingly, but it is a rare and it's a very famous one, Vampiric Tutor. For one black mana, you can pay two life to put any card from your deck on top of your deck, which is extremely powerful. It's a lot of potential for combo decks. How much do you guess it will cost? Only if you don't know. How much do you think it costs in 2018? Um, yeah, there's been a long-standing debate as to whether Demonic Tutor or Vampiric Tutor are better. Let me know in the comments which one you think is better. Although, do note that Vampiric Tutor does combo with Miracles. This is something to know, you know, clearly I'm uh, biased towards Vampiric Tutor, but uh, BAM! 50 bucks is what these cards cost in 2018 at the moment. So if you have any of these cards, lucky you. Lastly, was there anything I missed? Let me know in the comments. Um, I definitely did go more quickly through this because it's the brief version of the video. If you want to see a longer version where I talk more in depth about each card, I'll put a link in the description below. Let me know your price speculations also, which cards you think will go up and down, which cards you think might appear on this list in the future, which aren't on the list right now. That about wraps it up. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.